Hello, everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. As always, a free way to support the channel is by leaving a thumbs up, by commenting as many times as you would like, or by subscribing. All of these things do help with Al Gore's rhythm. And without further ado, let's jump right into it. At the moment, for those of you not looking at the screen, it says Bitcoin price analysis. Which way for BTC as it consolidates above 56,000? That's a very exact number. 56,500 US dollars normally. And I guess it's just completely logical. Uh, whenever we end up getting news at some point, or rather we see that Bitcoin is in green, or in the red, uh, usually the articles tend to say like exactly where Bitcoin is going, but of course no one can actually tell where Bitcoin is going at the moment. Uh, so all the uh, articles are very like in between. Where do you think Bitcoin's price is going? Could Bitcoin's price potentially go to this figure if prices end up moving? I made the joke yesterday on Twitter as well. Uh, what was it like? Uh, Bitcoin's price can only go in two directions. It means either up or down. There's no real other way around that. It says technical analysis. It says, says Bitcoin closes below a, a Bitcoin close below 56,000 could spark a larger decline. And then there's a photo of a man at the top of a building. I would assume wearing a suit, uh, falling backwards. Not sure how he got up there or what his plans are. But anyway, so yeah, um, no. Real, extra, exact price news about Bitcoin. Everyone is still quite curious as to exactly what's going to happen. I'm not sure if you've seen this around. This is kind of the uh, new term floating around at the moment. It's called the Santa Claus Rally. I'm not sure why people keep putting this kind of stuff out there, but alas, here we are. The idea is, well, Bitcoin didn't want to move up around Thanksgiving, so now Bitcoin is potentially preparing to move up around Christmas time, which means that Santa Claus gave it to us. And it's like, just stop giving these really weird terms for things. I think we'd all be a lot better off. Uh, this is my favorite one. This article says, what would happen if Bitcoin goes to 150,000 in the near future? We'd all be happy. I don't know how else uh, pe people would have a great winter. I, I don't, um, yeah, so... Uh, once again, uh, Plan B has been discussing things with many a person, uh, trying to figure out exactly what's going on in the market. Uh, a lot of people think it's manipulation, maybe myself included. A lot of the Bitcoin news has been absolutely spectacular. Not even just good. Like It's not even like banks are looking into Bitcoin. It's like, no, they're actively buying and accumulating huge amounts of Bitcoin, but the price continues to go down or sideways. I understand consolidation. I've been here for a while, but that's not how supply and demand actually works, especially with a mega finite um, asset. On top of that, for some reason, this was also going around this idea on multiple websites. For those of you not looking at the screen, it says Ethereum is about to go parabolic against Bitcoin as analysts weigh a Bitcoin Bear case. I assume that is because Bitcoin isn't performing as many people would like it to, and the cryptocurrency market isn't moving as one would believe that it should be moving after all this accumulation and news that we've been getting over the course of 2021. However, according to the charts, Ethereum appears like it is about to go absolutely bananas. I assume that is off of the back of the news that we are potentially on the cusp of getting Ethereum 2.0's merger sometime at the beginning of next year. No one knows, but we did just have that news with the um, with the head developers who was like, hey, we need people to test it right now. Usually public testing is like the very last like jump before we actually end up doing stuff as there has been internal testing for about a good two or three something or other odd years. At the moment, it says Ethereum is well and truly in the middle of a big breakout against Bitcoin, according to top crypto analysts. I think this is only going to if... Ethereum does, in fact, I mean, hit 5,000, 6,000, 6,500, 7,200. This is only going to strengthen the, the narrative around uh, the flipping happening once again. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, and also, these are two analysts. These are two different analysts, by the way. These are two analysts talking about, you know, vastly different things, but they're coming to the same conclusion that allegedly... 
within the next week or two, we should see a gigantic breakout of Ethereum. But at this point, you know, I've, 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 I've yeah, I've, I've, I've that wasn't English, but you understand my tone. Anyway, that's all the price news. There was nothing about altcoins. There was nothing about Cardano. There was nothing about Avalanche or any other weird, odd, other alternate stable coin thing out there. So yeah, uh, people are confused about Bitcoin's price because it's confusing. And analysts believe that Ethereum is getting ready to pop, bloop, go up. Anyway, that's the price news. And yeah, let's move on. In news that I think that we are supposed to care about, but no one actually cares... It says it looks like the Securities and Exchange Board of India, or SEBI, will be overseeing the country's crypto markets as per reports. Allegedly, so saith the internet, there will be no ban on investors having exposure to private cryptos in India, a source-based report has confirmed. The idea, for those of you who have no idea what a private cryptocurrency is, it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. These coins that aren't owned by any company or corporation or uh, are not created by governments. They are simply decentralized and therefore, in this way, they are private. You can also usually, if you hear private cryptos, people think that it has to do with like Zcash or Dash. No, like it, those are private transactions. Cryptos. Private cryptos are ones that y- y- you could own them, and entities would never know that they were actually in your possession. These reports come in soon after an ORF report stated that a ban would be technically impractical because it's not possible. It also reasoned India's stance on disallowing a darknet crypto market by regulating the sector. Yes, because everything that isn't in in control of a government just has to be evil, just has to have the word dark in front of it, because that's how you confirm to the public that it's evil. As reported by NDTV, a cabinet note circulated by the Indian government mentions that cryptocurrency will be called crypto assets, fun, with investors being required to disclose their holdings. The report added, cutoff date will be prescribed for those under hashtag crypto assets to declare and bring it under regulation. So this is, I guess, the way that they're going to do it. I'm sure they've had so many, like, just crazy discussions trying to figure out how to actually get control of Bitcoin and I'm and I know someone in that room was like, "Well, can we can we take the Bitcoin computer and simply bring it here?" I you we we know someone said those words out loud. So the easiest way for them to actually get control, I was going to air quotes, but you know it's there um, of the market is to simply say, "Hey, tell us what you bought, when you bought it, how you bought it, give us all the information, um, and you won't get in trouble." Which is going to be fascinating to see how that actually ends up working out. This happened before uh, when India got rid of their largest uh, paper notes. This was, was it, four, five, six years ago at this point? It's been a very long time. Uh, the idea was then also uh, people would only have to use smaller bills and or potentially be forced into the digital payment sector so that the government could then uh, have more control over the money because I, I think their their argument was is that they needed... Um, they believed that they were billions of dollars, billions and billions and billions of dollars behind the tax revenue. Because people were using these larger bills. So, and, and I say I believe that this is news that we are supposed to care about because we've been getting news like this for a number of years. This isn't a confirmation by any means that this is actually going to happen. As far as I've been able to tell by looking through all the articles, um, yes, they are currently sitting down, having a, their, their current parliament session for some reason lasts nearly the entirety of a month, and I'm not really sure why this couldn't have been concluded over the course of a week. But alas, it's still the year uh, 1530, and the world still moves incredibly slow, and we don't have the internet. So uh, on the 24th of December, after this session has ceased and is finished, um, we should get actual concrete information as to if this is going to happen. This is not the first time. We've had many other years before, multiple actually, uh, where they have some type of a session, either a summer session or a winter session. Yes, because there, of course there are multiple where they end up discussing cryptocurrencies and by the end of it, they've come to no conclusion. And people in our market end up getting really excited and say, well, no, no I read it online. It's done. I'm like, no. We, we would know when a billion people would be legally allowed to enter the cryptocurrency market. So here's the original um, article online right here. It says all private cryptocurrencies will be regulated 
not banned. This is according to sources. I don't need sources. I need actual paperwork from this country because they have been trying to manipulate the market for a very long time. Securities and Exchange Board of India is likely to oversee the country's crypto markets. India to regulate, not ban crypto cabinet documents. When those documents have been signed, they will have the go-ahead. Yeah, one of the most popular news stories of the day, of course, uh, a billion people getting into the market is or would be quite fantastic. Uh, but the government also understands the implications. Like, it's one thing to be able to say, hey, uh, show us the cryptocurrencies that you have or that you've been accumulating or whatever over the last couple of years. I think this will actually shock the government when they are in knowledge of exactly how much uh, people believe in other financial assets as opposed to one that the government has been trying to push on to people such as stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and probably even property within the country, which will only then empower more people uh, when they see, or, and I'll say if, they see the cryptocurrency market continuing to rise, why would I invest in gold, which is also major in India? Like, it's not even like a small industry. Gold is gigantic in India. I Watch documentaries on it. Like, it'll completely blow your mind. Like, it is a major thing there. Imagine if... There is a wedding or a ceremony or something happens where someone gifts someone Bitcoin or a digital currency as opposed to gold. Anyway, um, that's something else for another time. Anyway, that's the India may not ban crypto news. Once again, 24th of December. Don't even hold your breath because this is not the first time that they've done something like this. And without further ado, let us moving on. Next up, also in, I'm, I'm completely shocked by this. This has never happened ever before news. The US SEC has rejected an application for a Bitcoin spot ETF from Wisdom Tree. I, I mean, first time this has ever happened. The SEC published a letter on Wednesday, the 1st of December, concerning Wisdom Tree's Bitcoin exchange traded fund. Wisdom Tree initially filed the application in May, but for some reason it took about six months for about three people to read this paperwork. However, the SEC delayed a decision on the matter until this week. Now the SEC writes that the CBOE BZX, the exchange which would have listed Wisdom Tree's ETF, does not meet particular requirements around fraud and market manipulation. Hmm, heard that one before. It says that BZX particularly did not meet the requirement that the rules of a national securities exchange to be designed to prevent fraudulent and manipulative acts and practices and to protect investors and the public interest, I'm sure, because that's exactly what the SEC is doing. So, um, at the memento, I would not be surprised, zero percentile points, if uh, Bitcoin's price, Bitcoin is not down, down per se. I think it's down by like half a percent, somewhere around that really weird number. I would not be surprised if over the last couple of hours, uh, the market got wind of the fact that uh, the SEC has once again rejected a Bitcoin ETF, and therefore this is a reason for the slight price movement downward. Um, and also, I believe today is an options expiry day, and therefore, you know, we've been told for years that our market has to react to people um, trading in paper Bitcoin. So that's something. Uh, this was also quite popular news. I'm not really sure why it's forever popular news, uh, but, you know, the SEC is going to SEC, so that's just what they are going to be. I can rhyme. Anyway, that's the SEC news. There's, <laughs> there's a Bitcoin trying to get into something with a digital sign that says stop. It's clearly see-through, meaning he can just walk through it, but, oh, maybe it's a metaphor. Like, we can get past what the SEC is trying to do if we just walk through the digital. Next up, all right, I'm going to stop. On top of that, in probably the most popular news story of the day, the German multinational corporation that crafts, what? Athletic shoes, sportswear, and accessories, Adidas AG, or Adidas AG, depending on, you know, German, is teaming up with the non-fungible token brand, the Bored Ape Club, and the comic series Punk's Comic, period, that was a weird sentence, Adidas revealed last week that the company partnered with Coinbase and believes that the metaverse is one of the most exciting developments in digital, P period, who, are people missing words as they type these paragraphs, De developments in digital world, the digital, I don't know, 
Adidas wants the world to know that it is entering the world of blockchain technology and metaverse collectibles in a big way on the 2nd of December. It's already December. Jeez Louise. The company's Twitter account announced that it had teamed up with investor G Money. Is that a rapper? G Money. If, if, if it's not, he should be a rapper. The Board Ape Yacht Club and NFT project The Punks Comic. They said, today we leap into the metaverse with Board Ape Yacht Club. G Money and Punks Comic, it's time to enter a world of limitless possibilities. The tweet was liked over 8,000 times and retweeted more than 4,000 times. Why we had to know that, I'm not really sure. The tweet also leads to a portal called Adidas Metaverse, which says... It's happening! G-Money, Punk's Comic, and the Board Ape Yacht Club lead Adidas into the metaverse. Let's go! It was also revealed that they hold... Oh, uh, wait. It's right here. Where is it? They hold um, a couple of NFTs. It appears that they purchased, I think, this NFT right here. Maybe someone made it for them. I'm not really sure. Was there originally a Board Ape Yacht Club Adidas one? I don't know. Anyway, it looks like they own it because they made it their profile pick. And usually the idea is you own the NFT before you make it your profile pick. I assume someone else doesn't own this. Anyway, um, what else is there? So, no real news or information as to exactly what's going to happen. I saw a couple of websites uh, talking about that it they could make a Bored Ape Yacht Club like clothing line. Like a digital clothing line or maybe a physical one. I assume if they're doing all the NFT stuff and talking about the metaverse, they're probably they could make extra money. They just made physical clothing, but I, you know, I think the NFT stuff would sell out uh, relatively quickly. Um, so yeah, uh, I think the last news that we got was no, no, the the one from before before was that Adidas was like, oh, metaverse wink oh probably nothing and i was like well you know you you said the word metaverse so it's probably something and then they partnered with coinbase and now they've partnered with a rapper a comic book and a board ape yacht club so probably something anyway very popular news there's just a shoe that's running with like a laser beam or like milk being thrown at it i'm not really sure what that's supposed to be so that's the adidas news i assume in a week no, 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 no. I give it near Christmas. For some reason, I have a very big feeling we're going to get a lot of, like, uh, crypto news around Christmas that's going to have to do with, like, metaverse stuff. I I just feel it in the air. Anyway, that's the Adidas news. And let's move on. Um, Also in the news, and I'm just going to assume this happened because we're in the future and that it, it just feels futuristic. A Canadian healthcare service firm called Ask the Doctor has added nearly $1.5 million worth of Shiba Inu to its balance sheet via the exchange called Kraken. Kraken itself notably listed Shiba Inu in late November. According to a tweet, the Toronto-based firm published on social media, it had used Kraken to buy SHIB and is starting to accept SHIB payments with local payment partners in the near future and then you can see their wallet and i guess it's meant to show that they have tons of shiba inu but literally no canadian dollars uh so um cool that this happened apparently they've been doing it because the the shib army has been telling them to accept it i do hope that this is money that um they are in needing in the near future and or using as 1.5 million into a meme coin is a bit intense. I hope that maybe they also in you know throwing it out there, um, ask the doctor that they also maybe invested 1.5 million into another coin that might be more stable or have more of a potential future. I'm not sure. I, this is why I said this is this is a very futuristic um, news story. Like, imagine being... Okay, go back in time. Like, we're in 2002. And you hear that your doctor has bought $1.5 million of a physical coin. No, even digital coin. It just wouldn't make a lot of sense. It has, like, a dog with its folded arms on it. Anyway, um... I own Shiba Inu, by the way. You should all have known that already. I've I've told you that millions of times. I I do take bets on um, what's your jaggers 
on like more obscure coins just to kind of be like, sure, why not see what happens? However, um, I have not put 1.5 million into anything at this point. Anyway, that's the um, Shiba Inu doctor, ask the doctor news. Wouldn't it, wouldn't it, would it not be something if in like eight or nine years, it's worth like half a billion dollars. I think we'd all be, don't lie, we'd all be quite shocked, but that'd be good for them. Anyway, that's the Chibino News. All right, let's move on. And to finish things off, Goldman Sachs and a handful of other Wall Street banks are exploring ways to do inter, no, wait, institutional cash loans with Bitcoin being used as collateral. The report cited three people familiar with the plan of a group of tier one U.S. banking institutions interested in the activity. However, most banks would not custody physical Bitcoin to make the loans, but instead resort to synthetic products such as futures. The idea is to eliminate tri-party repro agreements. The report said it is a type of repurchase agreement in which a third party Agent facilitates the transactions between buyers and sellers by taking custody of the collateral and ensuring proper delivery of the cash and involved assets to each party as per the agreement's terms. We are now on the cusp of, and this is going to be quite fantastic for a lot of people seeing this unfold. Uh, we are going to see uh, the act of Bitcoin rehypothecation. Uh, I, I'll explain to you. These banks are already accumulating tons of Bitcoin. They're not going to bet on something that they do not have themselves. But the idea of them actually trading the Bitcoin uh, might spell trouble for them if they cannot properly time and or manipulate the market in their own favor. So what banks already do, they, they, they do this with gold. The idea is that um, you as a bank hold gold, got it. Uh, however, when people are looking to buy gold from you, they buy gold certificates. Let's say that these, these are still actually physical and you can hand out as many as you actually want. However, um, there are many theories, and this has been supported many other times before, the same exact way that if every single person right now ran to their local bank and said, give me the cash that's in my account, it would not happen because banks actually never hold the money that they say that they've given out to people in the form of digital money. The same exact thing goes with gold. If everyone who holds a gold certificate, ran to, if everyone ran to their bank and said, give me the gold right now, the bank would not have it. This has happened many other times before when other countries have asked other banks, give me the gold that we gave you to hold many, many years ago. Uh, the bank usually goes, we actually don't hold that gold. So what's going to happen is, to get to the point, uh, banks are going to begin to do this with Bitcoin. They are going to begin to issue debt and use Bitcoin as collateral that they actually don't have. The way that you can do this with rehypothecation, and this is completely legal as well, which is absolutely terrible and why the current financial system is the way that it is, is you are able to, let's say, hold a Bitcoin, however, lend against 100 Bitcoin. You do the loans on chain, but simply don't actually have the actual Bitcoin as collateral. You can use any other type of asset that you want to use that represents the actual Bitcoin. Part of the problem is that eventually, if at some point, these individuals want the actual physical Bitcoin, and 100 people go to Goldman Sachs and say, hey, give us our Bitcoin, but Goldman Sachs only has one Bitcoin that they've issued 100 times, what happens to that bank? We are going to get to a future very, very quick where people understand that the point of Bitcoin is being able to verify not only the transactions happening on the blockchain, but being able to verify that the person who is issuing you the loan actually has said Bitcoin, that you have the Bitcoin yourself for the actual institution. It's no longer a, let me write you a check that you can't verify for maybe a couple of hours. Let me say that, you know, let me try and send you a bank transfer that may or may not go through or simply saying that you have the money. No, it's instantly verifiable on the blockchain. Uh, so I am quite excited for this to actually take place, not for rehypothecation to actually be a thing in, in the Bitcoin space, but more so for banks to think that they can still get away with the old system and the people rapidly realizing that that bank doesn't actually have the Bitcoin that they're trying to loan out to other people. Look it up. Type in rehypothecation Bitcoin. You'll find tons of articles on it. Uh, banks have been trying to do this for about a year and a half, two years, trying to really get into the space. But when they finally fully break out into it, 
and people really start wanting their own Bitcoin in their own custody and also realizing that Bitcoin is a deflationary asset against the actual inflating US dollar and it's better to hold your Bitcoin yourself as in self-custody or even just on a cryptocurrency exchange where you can actually verify that if you are loaning out the, that money to Coinbase, your money's still on the actual website or that Coinbase is giving you what they say that they have. It's going to be a very fascinating future and I think that the bank thinks that they are ready for it, but they're not because they're going to continue doing exactly what they've been doing before. Anyway, um, yeah, very popular news. Anytime that we ever get any type of bank getting into the cryptocurrency space, people lose their minds and they think it's absolutely fantastic or amazing or it's going to cause an avalanche of other monies to fall into um, our pants, pockets, into our falling into our, <laughs> fall into our pants. So yeah. Um, and I believe this is the actual, if I'm not mistaken, yes, this is the actual, um, uh, no, what is this? I don't remember. Why did I open this? I think it was to show that other banks have been doing collateralized loans, uh, against Bitcoin. I think, I don't know. This was, this was a tab from somewhere. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so one second. I don't know why I always wait forever to do this. Why is the brightness of my phone so low? Like I, I couldn't even see the screen. As always, a very special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Bolero Bastos, Crayola Michelle, you are L on Crypto with Lionel. Tigger Macho Nisa, bake me a cake anytime, fitness monks going to staff. Body McBoatface, just a crypto miller, hitch test every day, and Kyle skips leg day. Minting coins, Jeremy Fox, Jim Gardner, Nick Mangia Lavori, Paxis, Vlad the Impaler, Richie Richard III, Setsuna, Damien. Crypto artist, Coldy 3D, Bankroll Network, 242 to the World, Wise Nine, Owl, Jared Schneider, Master, Avengers in Thailand, Morha Maroney, Adam Grayson, Todd Mullis, Abiliophobia, The Animal Reader, John Sarson, Nostromo, Martin Stoyer, Moonman High, XRP, Utopia 569, Yasha Harari. Attila the Han, David James, that's correct. Navarro Williams, Suspicious, Agile, and Blockchain, Tolik Panan, Snacky Chan, Conan, Don't Skip Leg Day, Patra Nasser, Need a Miracle, Space Case, Troy, All Good, Bare Bones, Mining, Quarter Biddy, Lauren De Silva, Miguel Grolet, VB Nerd 21, Jojo Shaw Show, Mo Barazi, and Carlos was like, Speedy 655, AJ Cut 5, Crypto Black Sheep, Captain Something in the Z Way Lay, Not Brain, M, Wish Nikki, Umnu, Red Plum Tomato, The Dealers, D'Antonio, Broski, Arachno, Dave, Bitcoin, Ben, Roman, Geba, uh, Mortified, Fudweiser, Stake It With Valor, Empire Queen, Hakeem, Wilkins, Chris, and let's move on to Professor Wally from Gun Abata University. Thank you all very, very much for your continued support. I do thank thee from the bottom of my digital heart. Um, thank you to everyone who left a like, a comment, has subscribed, is new here, is watching to the end of the video. I do thank thee. At the moment, Bitcoin is at 56... What is that? Sorry, something touched my hand. Bitcoin is at $56,490. Here's what I was talking about. It's down by zero. It's at 0 0.84. Uh, it's like up, down, not really, kind of. Uh, really weird movements, like heavy spikes over the course of the last 28 hours. Um, we could pretend that we don't know why this is happening. But, you know... Um, many coins were doing really well last night, but then Bitcoin's movements downwards have kind of like shocked the market into submission, if you will. Binance coin was going up, fell back down. Ethereum was also going up at a certain point as well, I guess, against Bitcoin. Cardano was doing extremely well last night. Uh, and then, you know, alas, here we are because of a Bitcoin. Dogecoin is down by three. Luna Terra is up by 8.45 percentile points. Uh, Chainlink is up by 1%, Polygon is up by 4%, Lumen is up by 8.5%, Axie Infinity is up by 3 OK, B is up by 3 Cosmos is up by 15.6%, Tron is up by 26 no Tron news, but sure, why not, if you can do it, go do it, Sandbox is up by 2% as well, Monero is up by 3%, EOS is up by 2 Ooh, oh, it's still there, oh, look at them, IOTA is now number coin 45, I, I, I love that I'm like following the saga of IOTA, on this channel. Um, can they make it to the top 40? Find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. Okay. Um, anyway, that's going to do it for this video. I do is today Friday? Yes. I, I I felt it in the air. Um, I do hope you all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, supporting, 
listening, and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.